Well, as most of the pundits have been saying, we've both been training the house down throughout the break, and in fact, we've come back after the break in the best condition we've ever been in. That's not saying a hell of a lot, of course, but this is the Titus and Sergio Variety Hour podcast, back for 2020, and uh, I'm Sergio Paradise, and of course, I'm joined once again by the original dance monkey himself, it's Titus O'Reilly. <laughs> Good to be back, and uh, look, it's, it's it's a heavy art I start this year, because yeah. uh, the news that's just come out of Richmond, and I, I broke it to you just before we went on air, and we actually debated whether to even record this podcast. Yeah, it was, at first we were saying, should we even mention this news in the podcast? And then it got to the point where we thought, this is so big that maybe we shouldn't even do the podcast at all, but we are going to press well, it. Well, out of respect, I thought, should we even do it? And, and I knew the way you reacted. I didn't know if you'd even be able to do it. <laughs> uh, and, I, and I certainly didn't know whether the, I was. The emotions but, uh, are still fairly raw. They're pretty raw. So I just if everyone forgives us a bit that uh, as we record this, mm. this news is just broken. But uh, it was, uh, I saw it in the Herald Sun, uh, but it was also on social media. Um, and the news is that Richmond player Daniel Rioli and Mia Favola have made an announcement about the future of their relationship mm. and how they feel about each other. Right. This is, this is the headline. And is the, the future Sun. of their relationship... Well, just, just tell me. Just well, well, I think I'll go to the article here yeah. and uh, take you through it. And um, it, it starts off young footy glamour couple Daniel Rioli and Mia Favola have split. Oh, no. Which uh, I, knew, I knew you were pulling for these guys. <laughs> uh, and so... Uh, if you need to take a moment, Serge, just do while I read a bit of this article. But on, now I understand how older folk feel about the day JFK died. I, I think you're right. I mean, it's the only feeling I can equate to this is that I've felt before in my life yeah. uh, is September 11, obviously. Yeah, you um, never forget where you were. You never forget where you were. You also know that life's never going to be the same again. <laughs> and uh, It's uh, when we lost our innocence. <laughs> <laughs> we, we have, and a lot of mixed emotions, really. Like ha- you know, like happiness that, that uh, you know that they'd found each other and then just smashed against the rocks of despair. Mm. Um, now, I'll read you a bit of um, Favola, uh, Mia Favola, that right. is Brendan Favola's daughter. Um, she's put out a, a, a statement on social media, as right. is correct whenever you end a relationship. Yeah, that, that's that's the way you do it. Yep, straight away. Uh, even if you've only seen each other for a few weeks. <laughs> um, if you don't put out <laughs> a, a, an official statement. Even if it's just an unsuccessful crack at Tinder. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you should, uh, so she wrote, hey, guys, I know you all have a lot of questions. That's how she starts. Oh, don't we? Don't we all? I mean, so many. Yeah. So many. And I appreciate her um, just starting off acknowledging. Yeah, I appreciate her candor. Yeah, acknowledging this. that yeah. we had a lot of questions. Yeah. And um, she wrote, Daniel and I are no longer together. However, we still love and care for each other very much and remain the best of friends. Of course they do. Um no one ever publicly breaks up the, the, the celebrity things and, no. and is like, and I'm, now I hate the bastard. Yeah, no. Nah. Yeah, I, I never want to see that prick again. Yeah, you know? yeah, which is the natural reaction <laughs> how most relationships end. She then wrote on social media, thank mm. you for respect, respecting our privacy. To and her 100,000 plus <laughs> followers. And I think if there's one thing they've always done is, is being very private about their relationship mm. Um when it's splashed across Confidential and the Herald Sun regularly. Um, Rioli also issued a, a comment, which oh, I think he? is appropriate too. What did Daniel have to say? He, he did his on Instagram and he said, hey, guys. So, they've, they've got all the social media covered between it's the all, two of them. It's, it's, uh, That's uh, good. You have to, they've thought this through. You have to say they've done well in, in terms of stakeholder engagement. <laughs> They have uh, ticked all the boxes, I have to say. I couldn't be more thrilled with them on that. Like, big tick guys. Yeah, yeah well done. Uh, so, he wrote, Raoli wrote, um, Hey, guys, I know everyone is wondering what is going on with Mia and myself. Right. Which is true. Yeah, oh, I've been... I mean, that's why we had to take an extended break. <laughs> <laughs> I think everyone, like, you know, I think... Um, I've heard in China this is huge news. <laughs> And it's not the coronavirus off the front page. Um, he says, so I know everyone is wondering about what is going on with Mia and myself. And, and boy, have I spent some uh, sleepless nights yeah. wondering. Uh, and I hate to say this, but we are no longer together. Right. However, and I think this is a, a nice touch. We both love each other 
and still remain close as best friends. Best, not just friends, best friends. Best friends. Right. Hopefully, you guys can respect that. Well, Daniel, I just want to tell you right up front that we can respect we it can. and do. We can and will, and we'll continue to do so. <laughs> In perpetuity. But you've got to say, just look at it, and I don't want to you know, disparage anyone here, but Daniel's dodged a bullet there. You think? In, oh, well- do you really want Fev as your father-in-law? I guess, I guess you never have to worry about being the worst behaved at a family function. <laughs> or the drunkest. Or yeah. if, or if the, do, the you think be, do you think yeah. there'll be booze at this event? <laughs> uh, he then added, always going to be my best friend with a love heart emoji next to a photo of Favola. Oh, all right. Uh, now, as you know, Favola 20 and Rioli 22 were last photographed together at the Portsy Polo in early January. So, mm. this is pretty fresh uh, yeah. and hence our, uh, I, I, I don't know. I just it just goes know. to show how on top of these big stories the Herald Sun are. Yeah, I think I would describe my reaction at the moment is I'm numb <laughs> and a bit in shock. I, I I haven't had time to process this. Yeah, I know, I know. We're just talking blindly here, trying yeah. to work, work our way through it. It's, it's very raw, guys, and I hope uh, everyone listening uh, can respect that, well, you know, that we're, we're coming to terms with this as much as you are. And I hope when people are listening to this, that if they yeah. hadn't heard the news, uh, which would be hard to avoid, but if they hadn't heard the news, because I know everyone's mm. been wondering what's going on, uh, I hope people they thought were, we were gonna, down. People thought we were going to lead with something minor and irrelevant like the coronavirus I know. or you know, yeah that's right and a here, world pandemic just shows yeah. you we're back into it and already probably the biggest story of the year yeah it's, uh it's broken. footy is broken um what do you think about um while while you and i have agreed wholeheartedly and with great uh with a great deal of sincerity that we we can respect them mm. remaining best friends how do you feel about remaining best friends with an ex? Do you, I find that harder to. I don't know if that's going to stand the test of time, but I mean, no. young kids these days, I don't, I don't pretend to understand. And, uh, you know, when it comes to love, I'm not the guy to ask, but, uh, <laughs> you know, to get quality advice on this. But that does seem a bit weird. It does. That you're going to break up with someone but remain best friends. Yeah. See, see back in my day, you, you, you would try, <laughs> you, would, you wouldn't spell it out quite so. Black and white as, as we remain best friends. Yes. You, you just hope to think that she'll take your drunken phone call one Sunday night and let you pop round. Yeah. Right. That's, you know. that's what you always say. <laughs> yeah. you, that would be a good thing to put in a statement. <laughs> <laughs> I hope that in the future- After I've been at a session with the boys all day, can I pop round to your joint about midnight yeah, on a yeah, Sunday? Yeah, yeah. We'll probably make a series of bad judgments for a few months before this finally dies. Um, so, obviously- um, we're going to continue on with the podcast. Yeah, um, we've started now. We can't sort of obviously, go but, back. you know, because I think that's what they would want us to do. <laughs> I think they would want some normality. I hope it to... doesn't affect his form or his. Or well, that's I hope it thing. doesn't. You know, put a hole in in, in Richmond's season. Well, you've got to say. I mean, sometimes you see this thing where uh, a guy hooking up an athlete. Usually, yeah. the, it's the guy. Um, you know, hooking up with someone mm. results in a runner poor form to the point where that woman is blamed. Yeah. Um, but you have to say that uh, uh, Mia Favola has been a boon for the Richmond Football Club in terms of on-field results. Well, that's right. That's right. She's she is yeah, sort of taken over from her old man as, as as being the most successful footballer in that family, quite possibly. So. Um Look, well, you know, I guess we'll move on now as much as, you know, you and I could sit and talk about this issue all day, but oh, no. um, I just hope everyone out there is all right. And um, <laughs> and if you're uh, listening to this in the car, feel free to just pull over and, and yeah, gather your a thoughts. Yeah, a cry. Yeah. Um, and... Uh, and Lifeline, uh, is, uh, if, if, you're, uh, if you're feeling that flat. Um, how was your break? I mean, a lot of people are saying, why weren't we back earlier? And we, we can answer this very easily. Yeah. Um, well, I've word. been down at the beach. Schoolies. <laughs> School- oh. <laughs> but um, I've been down at the beach and trying to pretend the world hadn't restarted. Mm. But uh, it got to the point where um, and now, even I wasn't able to Now school's back yet. and, you know, we... You know, Footy's 
going to be back fairly soon. Yeah. Uh, it, it's probably time, but, but you know, we did take a break. Let, let's be honest, 2019 wasn't our finest hour as far as continuity goes. <laughs> 2009, I, 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 I'm rarely one of those people that buys in massively like at the end of the year on mm. – no, last year was great or bad. Yeah. I can't wait for it to be over. But last year, I was really glad. No, oh, last year, 2009 <laughs> was a shocking, shocking year. Shocking year. Yeah. Not just on the field. <laughs> <laughs> it was a train wreck of a year. So, hopefully, this year's a bit better. Um, so, yeah, it, was, it is good to be back. And we should uh, – you had a question that came in there I saw from uh, Gavin Howley. Yeah. Uh, what did he ask you? He asked me if I beat you in the two-kilometre time trial. <laughs> we do a two-kilometre pub crawl <laughs> yeah. as our preseason. In a car. <laughs> <laughs> we, we just go from drive-through bottle shop to drive-through bottle shop. We're collecting everything we need for the yeah. year. Um, so, yeah, no, it was a good – I had a good off-season. Yeah. Yeah. We, we, did you spend too much time worrying about the length of half time? Well, I did. Oh, well, you know what? I, I worry about a few things. Yeah. Uh, obviously, and you, you're, this is very close to your heart. We should talk about this up front because you've got a lot of chatter of this online. Yeah. Is uh, the coronavirus. Yes. Um, I, I, you've got a lot of people I, checking I, if you're all right, given your love of coronas. I'd, I'd like a buck for every tweet I got <laughs> using that included the phrase, Bucket of coronavirus. Yeah, you, you could know. have got bought a bucket of corona <laughs> with all the. But uh, yeah, no, I found out it's actually not related to the corona, the beer, no. which, which was uh, which was exciting for me to find out. <laughs> there, there, there was a, a good meme going around of corona not wanting to be associated with the, the virus, changed its name to Ebola. Yes, lager. So, and we should add the. It was a tough. Start to the year and and over Christmas with the fires going on, it would be remiss of us not to at least mention the fires. Yeah, because, uh, and uh, I'm glad there seems to be one or two places you can donate. <laughs> there were a few, but uh, I can tell you the fires had a big impact on me as a Melbourne supporter because one day I was at the Portsea pub, yeah, and you could not see really down to the beach. No, I know. So no. we've all been affected in some way. I mean, I was at Sandringham Beach and you couldn't even see the city on one day. I mean, yeah, because of the smoke. Yeah, yeah it was it was it, a pretty full on start it, it to the year. Knocked us around a bit. Uh, so we should say um, you mentioned before the halftime break debate that uh, yeah. we talked about this last year. The AFL kind of came out. It well, kind of came out that the AFL were considering reducing halftime to ten minutes. Ten minutes they suggested from twenty to ten. Then. The stories broke a bit later because it, it was a fair bit of negativity yeah. in response to that. There's a fair bit of uh, there's a fair bit of response to that. So they then said they were looking at settling at 15, yeah. which is typical AFL, right? No one wants something. You, you, they you bring it up. The, the sort of amber extreme claim. Yeah, you, amber claim. Yeah, yeah. yeah, and then you go, oh, we've listened. Now we'll do 15. Yeah. But they've gone even better than this year because they then went, oh, we've decided to make – no changes. Yeah. And this is typical of the <clears throat> Steve Hawking era mm. where ideas get floated. Crazy ones. Like yeah. remember last year you talked about they were looking to get tackling, reduce tackling in the game yeah. and all this sort of stuff. That's that went right. Nowhere. Yeah. That's so right. He, does, yeah. he does a lot of ones that he floats an idea. Um, someone once asked him on air, would you ever consider getting rid of the uh, 50, uh, 50 meter arc? And he said, oh, yeah, that's an interesting idea. I would think about that. <laughs> and he just announced the rule changes that relied on the 50 meter arc as yeah. part of the rule changes. So, yeah. that, and so he just that floats. That. He, he's never met a bad thought idea. Thought bubbles. Yeah, he the, thought bubbles yeah. in public, which when he was at Clubland, you could get away with that because yeah. you didn't have the power. But now everyone freaks out. Now, the AFL then go, well, why is everyone freaking out? Mm. But you go, well, hang on. Some of these dumb ideas you float, you do. Yeah. So that's why we freak out every time. You did AFL X. Yeah. You did the Gatorade game changer. <laughs> <laughs> like you did all these rule changes. Gatorade that- game changer. There's a phrase that we're never going to hear again. Yeah. Hopefully, oh, there's that. You know, they they did the they announced all these crazy rule changes to increase scoring, which resulted in the <laughs> lowest scoring in pretty much <laughs> season of all time. <laughs> time. Yeah. So so we do get worried when they float these mm. ideas. So then they've come back and said, actually, we're not going to do this. Yeah. And this was after um, an outcry from from supporters. But um, an, an encouragement from players and coaches. See, the, the, yeah. the, the, the guys who put on the show have gone, yeah, we've got no problem with shortening half time. Yeah. Whereas all the people who actually pay to go watch it have gone, hang on, that 
gives us no time to, to get a beer go to the or bathroom go to the bathroom. Or, well, and everyone that I spoke to, play up, you know, yeah, Oz kick. everyone I've spoken to, and I've been in this situation many a time, if you want to go to the bathroom and get food, yeah. you already have to basically leave with about three minutes to go in a quarter. Always, so, always about, I, re, I do it about the 23, 24 minute yeah, mark. So, you and you're, so you're, we're already missing fair chunks of games. Yeah. And I know some people have sent notes to me saying, you know, I missed, you know, tw- you know, 10 minutes of the third quarter of the grand final because mm. I was trying to go get a beer and go yeah. to the bathroom. So, so they've, so they've now said 20. So I thought, oh, that's, I thought it was when I saw the news, I thought, well, one, I'm annoyed the AFL crowd this nothing debate then yeah. when they could have debated this internally. Yeah. But secondly, they, I thought, once, you know, they've listened to the fans. Like, credit where credit's due mm. to the AFL, they've listened to the fans. <laughs> and then I clicked on the article and read it and it said, it's understood Channel 7 <laughs> were against the change because yeah. they would have less ads to sell. Well, that's... <laughs> Their biggest fan. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so there was no mention of the, the, the fan fans having whatsoever. any influence on this no. at all. No. So um, that was sort of a very odd debate. That's that. I feel like they've started well the AFL to the season. They have, yeah. As you say, they've they've, they've flown an amber claim idea, backpedalled on it, and then dismissed it out of hand, and then acted like everyone else overreacts. Yeah. That's which, what I love. How they always which means go, it, they'll probably introduce it after round <laughs> six or something. You know, just completely out of the blue. Uh, Super Bowl yesterday. It was a big day. It always is. Yeah, it's a great day. I'm a 49ers fan. Have been all my life uh, mm. since. Over- why, why is that? Why I, the so first what, game I ever saw was right. on. It was the Denver Broncos playing the 49ers, mm. um, and SBS showed it. That's right. I was down at the beach, and SBS showed it, and I would, you know, no. Did Don Lane host the no, coverage? No, I don't know. This no. was because uh, I, I was w- always watched Tuesday nights with Don Lane. Yeah, um, but that was the first game of American football I'd ever right. seen. I yeah. just loved it from day one, and yeah. the 49ers smashed them on that. It was with Joe Montana and I. So I just started barracking for 49ers. Fair enough. That was pre-internet. You couldn't. Yeah. It wasn't like you could follow the NFL in no, any way. You, you couldn't. I didn't think I knew any of the other teams' names yeah. except for the Broncos and yeah. the 49ers. But I, I followed them and then, you know, it suddenly was you could watch it all the time. So I went along to the pub. I was crushed uh, by the game because I thought the 49ers well, really I thought, added oh, in I went, no, 2010, I thought, oh, oh Patrick Mahomes, he's uh, yeah, bit for, off, for, bit all, off for all the hype. Yeah. He was a bit – he was missing targets. And and 49ers' defense looked like had him for yeah. – and it was just – but, uh, of course, it was the halftime show. Yes, it What did was. you think of the halftime show? Well, I was a bit puzzled at, at such a positive reaction it seems to have got in that I thought, well, yeah, it, it was great visually with the lights and the, yeah. and, the, and the dancing and all that and the fireworks and, and the lasers and all that stuff. But where I thought it let itself down was – the quality of the music. I thought the music was crap. Well, let's be honest. Like J Lee doesn't have many songs, all, 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 the, and Shakira's got a couple. A couple, you know, the biggest songs. What hips don't lie. I just thought it lie. was bonkers. Yeah. I thought it was. I, I didn't hate it. I just thought it was so like that guy in the silver uniform. Who was that bloke? <laughs> Came out. He made me think of you. I thought. I thought here he is. He's now it's T Row. That's what you call yourself now. <laughs> in a silver suit. He was the worst rapper I think I've ever heard. It's, yeah, that was totally bizarre. And then there were just bits where, like, suddenly Shakira was out there. There was a big dancing numbers and all that. Um, but what I thought was the most interesting reaction yeah. was universally everyone going, oh, Shakira's 43 and J-Lo's 50. Yeah. You know, and just it was this, that was what the thing that sort of seemed to get it over the line. Yeah. Like, everyone was, like, in shock. Hey, yeah. women who are over 40 can do stuff. Yeah, they can dance. <laughs> Yeah. And in fairness, good on him because I couldn't dance when I was 20 like no. that. I can't now. I mean, you know, I think people were expecting that the two, Shakira and J-Lo, were only going to dance with, you know, with their handbags in the middle of the dance floor, you know. <laughs> <Yeah>. around- <laughs> with a few sub-zeros in hand. <laughs> so, um, so, anyway, that's the NFL done for another year and it's always nice to see all uh, the Australian radio stations on their junkets on oh, Triple yeah. M and SEN and all that people They're all there. there. They're all there. Um, it, it is got to be one of the great sporting junkets of all time if you, oh, yeah. if you can get on board and you've got to get somebody to – 
pay for your ticket, obviously. What, what's the greatest sporting junket in Australian sport? Uh, you know, the, the pure junket, not like you're going overseas to play tennis tournament or something. Yeah. But there's the Australian, the international rules yes. where they go to New York to train before going to Ireland. Yeah. Uh, there's, you know, the China game. Mm. Which, which at the moment has lost a bit of its luster, <laughs> you'd have to I say. Do, I have loved it in regards to the coronavirus, how we keep being informed that um, the AFL are all over monitoring this. Oh, yeah. Of course they are. About their game. And yeah. currently it's going to go ahead, but it could all depend on, you know, you're sort of like, gee, you know. Uh, the, the, I'm they sure can't the Chinese open all the, are- They can't open all the gates at Marvel Stadium, but they're across the coronavirus. Oh, yeah. Don't worry about and that. And do you think also- I the mean, World Health Organization. I, I, I genuinely believe, no matter how bad this coronavirus gets, yeah. that given the Chinese people have just received this news about uh, Mia, Mia Favola <laughs> and Daniel Rioli, yeah. that to pull the car, the Port St Kilda game would just be too much cruelness yeah. in one year. So surely it has to go ahead, no matter what. And and especially now they've found out Ollie Wines probably won't be playing either. Oh, I know, he injured his other shoulder yeah, this year. good shoulder. The traditional Ollie Wines <laughs> in- injury to start the season. Um, but the other junket I thought, which was nice, uh, is that the Greater Western Sydney Giants have been oh, yeah. given the green light to explore playing a game for premiership points in LA. Yeah. Now- the Giants can't even win over Western Sydney. <laughs> like, don't do, you think- Do you reckon the San Fernando Valley might be stretching it a little? I feel a little bit like they've been given a job. They're like the employee you have at work. Yeah. That you go, right, your job is to finish off these whatever, you know, the, f- finish all these orders. Mm. And the, and you come back and find them and you go, have you finished all these orders yet? And, the, and you go, what are you doing? And they go- Oh, I'm, I'm just looking at redesigning the website. And mm. you go, well, but hang on, I wanted you to yeah. do all the orders. You haven't even done that yet. Like, yeah. finish the orders and then we'll talk. <laughs> but th- th- this is like, they, they've still got to win over Western Sydney. Like, yeah. the idea of taking them out of Western Sydney for a game, yeah. sending them to LA, yeah. for, for what? For what? For what is to is to get a good photo of a few of them, Heath Shaw, yeah. with the Hollywood sign behind yeah. them. That's, That's about it. The NFL can't win over you can LA. Do that with Photoshop. The, the, the <laughs> NFL can't win over LA. No. All the LA teams have, have ended up either moving the ones yeah. that are there now, like the Chargers have moved. The, it's, yeah. they, they do nothing. The Raiders, the, the, it was the LA Rams. Um, yeah, they've know. constantly just failed when yeah. they've been in LA. Like they're so, like the Gold Coast of. of <laughs> I love sport. ones for us fans and everyone who points out how ridiculous the um, overseas jaunts like to yeah. New Zealand and trying to win over it. I'd love for us ones to be completely proven wrong. Like yeah. the Giants go over there and suddenly America just converts overnight. <laughs> <laughs> it becomes the biggest sport in Who do you in reckon LA. they'd play? Who would they want to play? Whoever the AFL makes play over yeah. there. It, it's, always one of the <clears throat> po- it's always one of the broke teams because mm. no one else wants to go there. No. Like Collingwood aren't going to LA. Like they, they're, they're designed and Richmond too. Yeah. Um, and the Eagles the same and, the uh, Eagles, you know, they're, they're, and, and you know. Sydney Swans. They're designed, they're, their aim is to win a premiership. And they're all well run clubs with plenty of money Quite, and heaps yeah. of members. And they just, and they, they wouldn't give up a home game. No. Uh, to do it. So I, I just love the, the AFL and their clubs, they're like d- distracted by shiny things. Yeah. So rather than like that, an, you know, an ADD child, yeah, you know, that's right. like <laughs> yeah. you sort of go, here's a serious job you've got to do. Like if you're all for the Giants mm-hmm. and say, and this is the case for the Giants, you get a game each week in Sydney. Two Sydney teams give you that. It's a massive growth area. It's a multi generational mm. uh, thing we need to do to win over. Um, the, the West, yeah. then you go, okay, well, if that's what we've invested all this money for and that's what it is, then that's your job. Now, that might be long and boring and- And but, hard work, but-, but you But you've got to stick to the task got, at hand. You can't suddenly go, we're going to, to LA. Keep your eye on the ball there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then and everyone's going, oh, we're doing that with the Giants. We're sticking with the, the long-term vision and plan to win over Western Sydney. 
Oh, look, Hollywood. Yeah. <laughs> Oscar week. <laughs> yeah, that, G'day, fall. LA. Oh, Russ, Crowey might be there. <laughs> oh, look, there's Margot Robbie. Let's go. You yeah. can just see Chris Hemsworth being involved in this. <laughs> That's the, so get the Bulldogs over there and they'll be out. So anyway, that'll be, a, that'll be, you know, another... That'll be a good junket to go on, though. Oh, I, like, all, I like LA. I've always said I'll turn around on um, the international rules if I got a free ride. Absolutely, over there. Like absolutely. I'm, I'm completely, uh, you know, my price is pretty low. <laughs> <laughs> um, did you watch much of the tennis? Well, I did. I did. I, it's funny. Sunday night, the men's final. Yes. It, and it, this happens, I think, it, it, just to me every year is that I, I get right into the tennis, but by the time the finals arrived, I'm a bit over it. I'm tennised out. Yeah, yeah. And even even the other night, I thought, you know, Djokovic will probably win this match. I can't even be bothered watching it. Yeah. So I didn't, but came back just to watch the fifth set because it actually was a decent match. But yeah, yeah. I mean, the tennis that was an in, that was a good game. It was a great match, and and there were some belters. The Kyrgios um, Nadal one was a great match. Yeah. Um, pl- plenty of good matches along the dr- journey. Kyrgios, you have to be nice about now because he was yeah, nice about the fires and you showed more leadership than the Prime Minister. <laughs> you know when <laughs> Kyrgios is reading the room better than you that you're probably in a lot of trouble. <laughs> I mean, I'm not sure if Kyrgios has completely turned the corner he's sort of making out, but it just shows you if you set the bar low enough, yeah. if you just don't be as big a, you know, pain in the ass. yeah. That everyone suddenly is like, hey, he's really turned the yeah, corner. He's, where yeah, If it was that anyone else would just behave like he does now, they'd still be, he's still a bit of a. Yeah, he's still, yeah. Well, I mean, what would have, if, if he'd gone through and won the tournament, he oh. would have been arguably Australian of the Year next year. Oh, this is how easy it is to win it back. Yeah. Uh, I watched the Ash, I enjoyed watching Ash Barty, but I thought um, she, that. She that game she lost, you know, in the semi. Yeah, yeah, I watched that, mate. Um, game yeah, two last that was week. just very disappointing. Yeah, she, she had her she, chances, but she just she, she just never looked really in it no. in that game. And I love how the um, I forget which paper it was, but they said um, she was accused of using the baby in the press conference <laughs> as a human <laughs> a shield. Human shield. <laughs> I don't know. It's, a, it's like Iraq putting their citizens ne- next to their nuclear silos. Thought, you know? Let's not go over the top a little bit with a human, human shield, shield element. Like, yeah, I mean, and I, I don't know who used that phrase, human shield, but there were a couple of other critics suggesting that she used it to deflect criticism of her oh, performance. Oh, she probably did. Yeah, and if she but did, I mean, she's I don't smart. Really, I mean, she's done enough. Yeah. Oh, you know, she's got a few points in the bank. Yeah, she she can do that, and you know. And what she picked up a mill for losing in the although if I ever round. get in trouble in the media, I'm I'm just going to bring some. I'm going to find a baby <laughs> to bring in, just abduct one. You know, <laughs> I wonder if that's a business to hire out babies to deflect <laughs> from tough. Like if you've there got to go, go break up with someone, you bring a baby. There's a business opportunity do, do there. Think, Humanshields.com. <laughs> human baby shields. Do you think? Um, Baby shields. Do you think uh, Dan Rioli and uh, brought one along when they broke up? <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, you can't st- criticise me because I'm holding a baby. Yeah, it's not my baby, and I don't know who. <laughs> I don't it know who it is. That lady over there seems a bit annoyed I took it, but anyway. Um, so yeah, no, it was kind of interesting the, um, the the Ash Barty's run that it came to a bit of a fizzle. But God, she's done better than most of the uh, Aussie tennis players have in recent times. Oh well, I mean she's she's still number one in the world. Yeah, um, and probably will remain so for quite some time. I was impressed time. by Stoza maintaining the tradition of being bundled out yeah. in the first round, you know, with an enormous uh, consistency. Well, I had somebody tweet me about that before I even knew she was playing, and yeah. on that first day of the tournament, yeah, he said something to the phrase of "Here comes the phrase bundled out." Yeah, Stoza yeah. bundled out is yeah. like you know yeah. it's a bing on the bingo card. Um, we talked about Kyrgios being a lot better. Um, Tim Byrne wrote in, if it's now bad to bring children to press conferences, why do we still have to put up with Bernard Topic? <laughs> well, we don't really much anymore. Because Bernie he can't, he can't even qualify yeah, for these tournaments. Yeah, he's completely gone. He, he, I reckon he's just about finished. He re- he's cooked? I reckon he's cooked. Yeah. Um, and it all comes down because he, you know, he just hasn't worked hard enough for the last just, few years. He just doesn't care. He, yeah, he doesn't. He just count all his money. Uh, Kobe Bryant passed away as well. That was uh, that, that was, was that was big news. That I, I've been a little surprised mm. at the like response. 
Not not that I'm saying I, I I knew there'd be a big outpouring in certain areas. Yeah, but it's been just above and beyond anything. I, I, I was I a bit surprised thought, at, at like, the the world reaction and and the Australian yeah, yeah. reaction. Well, the Australian around the world and like they Amer- in Abu America Dhabi or something perfectly. they lit up one of their big buildings, yeah. purple and yellow. And I was like, a- America, I get it perfectly, but I was a bit surprised at how big the world story was. I just was. thought, imagine if Michael Jordan passed away. Yeah. I mean, I think it was the dramatic nature of it and the fact he was young. I did enjoy everyone tiptoeing around the uh, rape case yeah. that he was early, which I went back and revisited a lot of the uh, – it was settled out of court. Yeah. And I went back and revisited um, some of the details of that case. Right. They don't read well. No. You know, so it was kind of um, so. It'd, it'd be fair to say, if you're being honest, and I'll probably cop it heaps for even say, but there was a there was a complicated legacy with some of what Kobe did. That's yeah. not taken away from. I think he well, he's, he's turned not, things around a lot yeah. later, and maybe that was due to it and stuff. Imagine but it what was a, pro- a professional athlete having a bit of a checkered past. <laughs> I know <laughs> it's you hard to imagine. You're as shocked as anyone. <laughs> there. It's, it's absolutely amazing. Um, you you've always uh, kept it. Now the NRL off season last. Year, yeah, that had a. They had the worst. Well, people said the worst off season in the history of the NRL. Which yeah, is, which is, which I would say is saying something. It's a yeah, it's a big statement. That's like it? saying this is the greatest year for Grange. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like it's really that, that I wouldn't it's know about top shelf sort yeah. of. You know, so the worst. But this year, um, it seems it in comparison, it seems quieter. But that doesn't mean it's been completely. They still violent. don't let you down, though, the NRL, do they? When it comes to this, I mean, what are the, the two stories we've had just in the last couple of weeks? Um, there was was Curtis Scott from the Raiders, yeah, who used to play for the Melbourne Storm. He was arrested for being drunk in a public place, which again has got rugby league written all over it. Yeah, but he also, he, he, but not unique to rugby, not unique league. There, no. AFL players have done plenty of. But he, he attacked the cops physically, which. Well, they handcuffed him yeah. he was, while he was asleep. Yeah. And then he woke up and kind and of... And lashed out. Because, you know, I mean, I, I know you've had this happen to you many times, <laughs> waking up in handcuffs. Yeah. But no it cop, is a bit No jarring. cops were involved. It takes, yeah, it, took you a few, it takes you a few minutes to remember why you're in handcuffs. <laughs> but it is a weird one. Like It would be weird waking up normally, handcuffed. Normally one hand you yeah. can get away with. But when, when both are locked away. <laughs> um, so that was how he reacted. Yeah, um, and not well. Yeah, that was a weird one. And what was the, the Penrith player, uh, Penrith Panthers had another one as oh, well. Oh, yeah, Tyrone May. Now, he's been sentenced to 300 hours of community service yeah. for um, making four sex tapes Yes, without the consent of the women involved. And that's four, Cause four sex tapes this is, for different women. Because this was from a while ago, the yeah, incident. yeah. Because part of the incident two years ago, you, you know, not this summer, the summer before, there was a group, a WhatsApp group yeah. of NRL players, um, and some of it was alleged, some was proved, like this one yeah. of sh- filming without consent or with consent sometimes, yeah. but then not with consent, sharing it on a yeah, WhatsApp and group and with each other, and yeah. then some of them leaked and all that because yeah. men are horrible. Um, and, 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 you know, and men are as bad are- at privacy as Facebook. Yeah. <laughs> as a group, men, as men an organisation, And these particular good. men are also stupid. You put yeah. that together, well, this is what, horrible and stupid. Someone said to me, are you shocked by this NRL news? And I said, I am absolutely shocked that I, I thought – using WhatsApp would be beyond the technical <laughs> capabilities of an NRL player. Uh, the rest of it made uh, absolutely – it's funny, though, because um, Jonathan Brand contacted me because he was doing a segment for Nova. Yeah. They do this segment, and it's called NRL or AFL. And, yep. and they read to Chrissy Swan – Different incidences without oh, names in she them, has to guess. and she has to guess whether it's AFL because they're sort of challenging that idea that AFL players are better than NRL players. Yeah, because arguments can be made each way, and yes. they all have their moments. Sure. And he rang up. So, can you remember, or have you got any incidences that you can help me with that I can use? Yeah. And uh, so I gave him a few different ones, but I said, "Oh!" And so I, I said, "Oh!" I've and the got thing to- was, you wouldn't have had to think too hard. No, about No, and because you know, because of some of my books I've written about them, yeah. I, I said, "Oh, I can think about three or four off the top of my head. I'll, I'll cut and paste them out of the book and email them over to you." And then I, while I was doing, it, I just thought, "I'll oh, just do a quick Google." Yeah. Because um, I'd forgotten one or two of them, and one I'd written in one of the books about that I um, reminded myself of that I love was. Um, 
one player was caught urinating on. I can say what it is because we're not playing it. Yeah. It was Greg Bird from the in the NRL. Yeah. Um, he was caught after a big bender on a Sunday. Uh, he'd been drinking all weekend on the Sunday. He said uh, he was caught urinating on a police car. That's right. <laughs> anyway, the best bit about it is that weekend was his wedding, and that's why he was celebrating. And he said in the quote, he said, it's put a bit of a dampener, his arrest, subsequent <laughs> it's put a bit of a dampener on the wedding weekend. <laughs> <laughs> but the other one I'd forgotten. Police cars, the punchline. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. But do you remember 2007, mm. three um, North Melbourne players went to a day on the green. Yeah. And were watching the Lionel Richie concert. <laughs> and <laughs> this, well, this is not ringing any bells so right? far. This is a, yeah. uh, and Shannon Grant was one of them. And yeah. I forget the other two teammates. Um one of the teammates, not Shane Grant, drank so much that he passed out. Right. Or he says fell asleep, I think, or but passed out. And the police came to evict them. And while trying to evict them, Shannon Grant got pretty aggro and they had to capsicum spray him. <laughs> so who, That doesn't surprise me, Shannon Grant. But who goes to a Lionel Richie concert? <laughs> and drinks until <laughs> It's not a Slipknot out. concert. You know what I mean? It's not like even an ACD <laughs> key concert. It's not the sort of music that's <laughs> like... I'm so fired up, yeah. you know, I'm, I'm got this angry, you know, like... Oh, well, as soon as he gets into, you know, that, that upbeat bit in Say you, Me, Say You or whatever it is... <laughs> you reckon that, oh, that, got, the blood starts oh, you, to you run? Got a, oh, you got a shot, shotgun a corona, you know, at, at that point, you know. <laughs> I've never, I've never ever heard Lionel Richie, and at the conclusion of it, started to think, I just want to fight someone. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm just, uh, I think his music's aimed a bit differently, so I, I'd forgotten that one. That was a that's, that's a, a good one. Yeah, I'd forgotten about that. There's always ones you forget. Yeah, it's amazing that but, I mean the one similar to Greg get, Bird. Yeah, remember, um, Kane Johnson when he played for Richmond, when he was captain for Richmond. Yeah, he captain. This is another one Richmond. I gave. Him, yeah, yeah, and he. he, he was caught urinating on a police station. Yeah, yeah. I not a police, police car. station headquarters. Yeah. <laughs> the the, the taxi road. dropped him off and he lived next door to it or something. Yeah. Rather than just go inside, <laughs> he I'll, just- I'll just have a, have a slash on the- <laughs> You could argue you could miss a police car, but it's hard to miss a police station. They're pretty big. <laughs> they're, well, they're, well I, if anyone could miss it, it'd be a drunken footballer. <laughs> <laughs> it would surprise Especially me. Richmond back then. <laughs> not good at hitting a target. He could have just said that. I was actually yeah. aiming for- for my house. <laughs> uh, so that was an absolute pleasure. So the NRL doing absolutely beautifully as always. Yeah. Um, the AFL have just outdone themselves in the off season and it wasn't the biggest story, but man, it was amazing. Um, Brad Scott. Yes. Uh, has been former a- North Melbourne coach, yeah. brother of Chris. So, to, so in what I can only assume is so North doesn't have to pay him out. The AFL have given him a job. Yeah. And Which nobody really was surprised that the AFL will toss a job his way. Well, this is my theory. Like people, people <laughs> misread what the AFL is for as a central competition body. They think it's to you know set the strategy and and manage the game as I a whole. I think it's to run the competition. Competition and run the game and, nationally. And nobody, could, you couldn't be more wrong. What it is is it's an insurance policy for the clubs and those involved in the yeah. AFL to ensure them. Ongoing employment, and if a club, it's an insurance policy often for if a club is badly run because they know there's every club at some point's been badly run. Yeah, the AFL can come in and basically, like insurance, insure you against that. And, yeah. But it's happened at Melbourne. It's happened at you know you name any club that the AFL's had to pretty much come in and give them money to keep them afloat or put in new staff or whatever. Yeah. So they're like an insurance policy against both bad administrators. And also a Jobs for the Boys program for those that get sacked. Yes. To keep them in the system. And this Brad Scott appointment it, it crosses both of those lines. Yeah. And this Brad Scott, <laughs> yes, that's right, because it's helping North. Not after, and it's, but the other thing I think is amazing is, uh, is the title he's been given is peak where the AFL is at at yeah. the moment in terms of just pure nonsense. And his title is Competition Evolution Manager. Now, I, I sort of have this other theory, too, that, that at AFL House, there is a little office somewhere composed with people, full of people, whose job it is, is to think 
okay, we do have this insurance policy that, that Titus bangs on about and, and we want to keep jobs for the boys, but we do need to have to come up with the good titles to justify our decisions yeah. here. Yeah. Now, now, that goes back to, you know, behavioural awareness officers last year. Yeah, yeah. And now we have, what is it again? The evo- uh, competition, competition ev- evolution manager. What does that mean? Well, the only thing I can think of is involving the competition, which you could take it to mean, this is the beautiful Mm. thing of it, right, is it means nothing. Mm. Like you have to – it's a like if someone's job is head of marketing, you go, right, you're head of marketing Mm. or head of human resources. You kind of know what they do. Yeah. But competition evolution manager, is it evolving the competition – in a new market, is it is it evolving the rules of the competition? Is it like what is it, it managing the evolution of it? I mean, like, it just means nothing. Like, and it's a masterful piece of bureaucratic speak. Oh yeah, you know? and, and I also think if it's about rules and the look of the game and all that yeah. sort of stuff, then if he does absolutely nothing, yeah. he will be worth every cent he gets paid. Like, <laughs> uh, you know, because I reckon that f- most fans are just saying to the AFL, calm down, stick to your knitting, get the things you got on, yep. get them right, and just do that. So if Brad comes in and does that, um, well, so a few people <laughs> pointed out he would have been much better if he had been put in charge of complaints. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, will his paths cross with Hawking, do you think? Well, I'm hoping maybe he'll be a counter to Hawking, yeah. But he, yeah. Uh, he probably reports up to Hawking, I imagine. Oh, yeah. He's probably in that area. So, um, Shannon, Sharon Old wrote him, what, da- what does a day in the life of an evolution manager look like? Oh, Comes I'd, in, gets a coffee. Bro, yeah. 18 holes at the National. <laughs> <laughs> Go to a few meetings, yeah. <laughs> which nothing happens. Yeah. You know, that's din- basically din- it. Dinner with Gil. <laughs> and back and do it all again tomorrow. Yeah, I think his main writer is stay away from North. <laughs> <laughs> Try and avoid the media. That's basically it. Um, Australian under-19 cricketer was sent home um, in South Africa, I think he was. Yeah, it was the under-19. This was oh, Jason Cup, Fraser sorry. McGurk, who is Victorian. I think. Yes, he is. Um, he who doesn't he sound like an old Melbourne grammar oh, boy? So much. He could have played for Melbourne in the fifties. Yeah. Um, he's meant to be a very good player though. Um, but he was sent home from South Africa on their tour over there of the under nineteens after being bitten by a monkey. Well, I thought he'd been bitten by a monkey, but he's actually scratched on the scratched face by, oh, by well. a monkey. And and they're a bit worried because most of the monkeys in South Africa carry the rabies virus. Yeah, which is not one you want to get. It's not. Nobody wants to get rabies. Um, but <laughs> <laughs> what The question I want answered, and nobody could give me a proper answer, yeah. is why was he that close to a monkey that it could scratch his face? Well, even more so, like, and I ask this, put this question to you for your yeah. take on it, is have Cricket Australia mm. been asleep at the wheel when it comes to monkey incidences? <laughs> you know, what it, where were they? They've they've had a bit on their plate the last year or two, but, but we can't just have monkeys wandering around damaging our elite cricketers. No. Like we like, and I don't, I haven't even seen it. But why are they sending our cricketers into an environment where they're at the mercy of rabid monkeys? <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Like surely, if when they were in South Africa and someone said, "Would you like to come and see the rabid monkeys?" <laughs> the tour manager should have said. No, thank you. Or, at the very least, yell at each other, hey, phrase, wear your helmet. <laughs> <laughs> and pads and gloves. It's you a- don't want to cross paths with these monkeys. <laughs> you know, well, they're being protected. It is a real worry. I, I, you know, I, I don't think we're focusing enough on this. I mean, if only rabid monkeys attacking Australian cricketers was getting the focus the coronavirus <laughs> uh, is currently getting. One person who I uh, always turn to for medical matters, yeah. uh, of course, is Anthony Mundine. <laughs> and he's come out with a bit of a theory on the coronavirus. Yeah. Um, that it's... Geez, uh, he's been back in form a bit lately. Oh, yes. What? He's... Um, and Anthony... See, a lot of people, a few people I saw on Twitter saying, oh, you know, because Anthony Mundine's theory, we should just quickly say, is that it's a hoax yeah. to get people to... Um, so the authorities around the world yeah. can vaccinate people. Yeah. So that's what the coronavirus. It's a, it's a, a conspiracy theory. It's a, a mundane yeah. conspiracy theory. Now he, 
He hasn't offered to go to Wuhan to prove this, that there's no <laughs> threat, I notice. Um, if a lot of people are saying, Anthony Mundine, this is, you know, a, a result of too many hits to the head through his boxing career. Mm. But um, as someone who's followed Anthony's career right back, um, long before he was boxing getting hit in the head, yeah. Regularly, he would say things <laughs> He'd like say this. something this is equally pretty, stupid. Yeah, yeah. This is, uh, you know, to borrow a phrase, this is on brand <laughs> for Anthony. Someone on Twitter tweeted to me, and sorry, I can't remember, I don't have it in front of me, but said, uh, I- I'm going to wait for this. Um, I'm going to wait for this uh, theory to be peer-reviewed by Israel Folau before <laughs> accepting it. Um, Mundine often off, off, is often on the long run in sort of, you know, he's, he's not living in, a re- in our reality. No. And, and, and what is amazing too about Mundine is just he feels the need to make a public statement about this. Yes. And he's... Exp- Expecting people to take him seri- even more seriously. Well, what's amazing too is that it, I mean, in fairness, he, he, he gets report. We're talking about it. Everyone yeah. talks about it. He, yeah. he says anything like, but I love how he's contr- like he's got this. It's uh, he's got two controversies sort of now working with each other. One the, that it's a that it's um you know not a real yeah it's not a real virus disease or virus and, yeah. and and secondly because. It's an anti-vaxxer campaign is launching, which – are you shocked that Anthony Mundine might be an anti-vaxxer? Not in the slightest. Not in the slightest, but it would be the there, there is some child. sort of paradox here that if, if it's it, is anti-vaxxing theory, yeah. does that truly work against a virus? Well, also, he's sort of saying, um, well, it can because, you know, the polio yeah. virus and stuff like that. So, Yeah, but, we'll, but that's, that's the point of the vaccine. Yeah. That, that's no, what I'm getting to at. stop it, not yeah. to. Yeah. Yeah. Like he's to got propagate got the rock, thing. Yeah. He's got to end around. Yeah, that's, that's what I'm saying. But anyway, um, do you reckon it's worth us starting a GoFundMe page yeah. to get Anthony to China? <laughs> like we should say, we will pay for you to go to Wuhan. Yeah. And to or, prove everyone wrong and walk around, go to the hospitals, no, no protective masks, gear, no washing hands. No, nah, none of that. Just rock up. Yeah. Prove us all that we're wrong. Our, you know, because, look, you can, you can believe the World Health, Health Organization or you can um, believe Anthony Mundine. <laughs> believe Choco. They're, they're both pretty compelling. <laughs> <laughs> they're both, you know. I'll happily go with that GoFundMe to get him to Wuhan, <laughs> and I'll, I'll, th- I'll throw in an extra couple of hundred <laughs> to get him to South Africa to see, see be scratched by a monkey. <laughs> they're also just another ploy to get to, to, to get a uh, get vac- people vaccinated. Um, uh, speaking of people with good ideas, uh, Israel Folau has just signed a new deal with French team Catalans, who yeah. are rugby league. Yeah. Some are saying this is his thin end of the wedge of trying to get back into the NRL, yeah. which he thinks he might be able to at one point. And uh, look, can we write off the NRL doing that? <laughs> you know, anything's possible. Uh, you, it could end up in the A League the way they're going at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it may, but I, I read just this morning too of this oh, Catalans, the, the French rugby league team. Yeah. They didn't quite realise what they've done. Really? Yeah, they they they. But they they don't have access to the internet. <laughs> yeah, well, apparently it's it's very slow in Paris these days. But but um, they were going to have a big media event just in the last couple of days, right? Unveiling their their superstar new player, and then realised they were copping so much flack that they've sort of hidden him away now. They're just going to bring him out on match days. Oh right, like yeah. bring him out of the bring him out <laughs> of the <laughs> closet. <laughs> <laughs> Um, well, good on him. Well, isn't that just great? Always nice to see Israel doing well. Yeah. Um, such a kind man. Um, we had a couple of listeners' questions. They've thrown, it's a packed agenda for the first one. It is. It's plenty, but no, but nothing will, will top the Daniel Rioli, uh, <coughs> Mia Favola oh, story. Yeah. Stephen Maloney uh, has written in, can human nature be quarantined on Christmas Island for 20 years? <laughs> that was bizarre. Did, yeah. And he's talking about, obviously, human nature's performance. Before the men's final at the tennis on Sunday night. Oh, yeah. It was just bizarre. I, I, I watched it and I thought, is this the limpest, blandest, nothingest song ever written and performed by anyone, ever? It's, it's not the forum for... No. It's not showcasing new Australian talent. No. 
Um, it's a bit like when they had Dean Lewis at the grand final. It's yeah. like, I mean, I, I find Dean Lewis can put me to sleep yeah. at the best of times, but it's it's even less appropriate at a sporting event. Like yeah. sporting events, you either, you know, you go big or go home in terms of music. It's yeah. not a, I mean, unless you're Paul Kelly or Mike Brady, yeah. you are not pulling off a acoustic And as far set. as the event's concerned, I mean, players will get, just, just, Press play on Thunderstruck. You know? <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> but don't I, don't I overthink it. Here's human nature. And you think, well, they've probably been flown in from Vegas just for this one. But uh, the thing is, it had no – it wasn't a song anyone knew. It was their new single. Yeah. So, you know, I mean, everyone I mean, hates new it, stuff. Yeah, yeah nobody – It's not the right that. music for it anyway. No. It's human nature. Yeah. <laughs> they're not exactly, <laughs> you know, they're neither current nor, you know. And, and if they're uh, – Tennis Australia, if they're trying to, you know – Attract or appeal to a younger audience. I mean, kids are going. Who are these blokes? Yeah, you know, yeah. They're they're all in their forties now. And then I don't understand. And they're like, prancing around like the Jackson Five. They didn't even do a, a, one of their hits, and I use that term loosely, mm. or a Motown medley or yeah. something. Where you know you understand that might get people. Yeah, that, you know, that'd be a toe tapper. A toe tapper. Know? Yeah. Apart from that, it's just like <laughs> this is just nothing. Yeah. This is, it's just not worth the money. You're right. Just press play on, yeah. you know. <laughs> Hell's bells or something. <laughs> <laughs> That's all you need to do. It's very easy. It was absolutely bizarre. Um, Rodders has written in, will anyone notice the absence of AFLX this year? Well, what do you reckon? I mean, I won't notice it because I didn't notice it when it was here. But- well, my big thing here is if you cast your mind back, AFLX last year, which was, I can't remember the exact date it was happening around this sort of time. We had billboards. We had a live draft on television, if you remember, on Fox Footy, where the the captain sat around and had a draft. We had billboards. We had, like, I can't remember if we had trams. but In Melbourne, there was a lot of media, right? AFLW starting this Friday. Yeah. You would not know it. No. Like, unless you're on Twitter and follow accounts and various things. AFL of like after spending a fortune on AFLX, they have done almost. I mean, when's the last time nothing. you saw Nicole Livingston, who's the supposed of AFL? I WCO? ran into her in Coles the other day. I know. <laughs> that's the last time. <laughs> that's more you've seen. Yeah, her, yeah. Than promoting AFL. I ran her in Coles in Sandringham. Yeah, it's like good day, Nicole. I said, you know. <laughs> AFLW uh, coming back this yeah, year. Yeah, there's going to be any footy happening shortly. What, what do you reckon? You know, she said, "I'll have to check. I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> I've been at the tennis." Um, so yeah, the AFLWs, and I, like it is to me, just and I know. Look, every time I talk about AFLW or write something, I, I get the inevitable bloke will get on and go, oh, "I couldn't be less interested." Yeah. Um, which here's why that annoys me. I'm not saying, like, legally you don't have to watch AFLW. No. Just so that person, those people know. Like, I'm not saying you have to watch it. But <laughs> the reason I like AFLW is I think for the code, just from an even, forget all the equality and it's great that women have the access to play footy and all that sort of stuff, yeah. which is not. For, if you are, f- a f- like, people say, well, the stand's not that great and all that sort of stuff. Well, I go and watch local footy. You go and watch Halebury play. Yeah. You know, your kids are involved there and you've been involved there. Like, if you like footy as a, as a sport, mm. not – you know, I, I know AFL is way better than any other format of the game. It's better than the Waffle. It's better than the Sandfall. You know, it's – It's just the way it is. It's just the way it, the way is, it yeah. is. better yeah. than the VFL. Like, just the way it is. It's better than going and seeing the Dingley Thirds, right? Mm. Like, it just is. But that doesn't mean you still can't find enjoyment because you love the sport. And secondly, if you love – the footy, you want – I want other people to enjoy it. Mm. And you know at a grassroots because you're involved in a lot of that sort of stuff. Yeah. How much has AFLW and women's football invigorated clubs around the country? Oh, there's no question. I've, I've said this a number of times that so many, like, junior clubs and you know, district local footy clubs yeah. everywhere now suddenly have one – two, three, sometimes five or six girls' teams now. Yeah. Now, if nothing else, that means 150 girls all paying their subs to the club to play. That means 150 sets of jumpers and shorts and socks are sold. Yeah. There's 150 sets of, of sets of parents who go and spend money at the tuck shop. Often and bring all their that stuff. sons as well, so yeah. it's easier for families. If so, you've got to- 
even forgetting the football side of it, economically, it's good for the, the, these clubs. But interest-wise, I mean, yeah. if you get young girls playing footy, yeah. they're much more likely to stay fans mm. as they grow up. I mean, yeah. we, AFL's always had very – Australian rules always had very good female participants in terms of spectators. Yeah. But, you know, there's nothing like – even if you were rubbish at sport mm. and at football, I was certainly rubbish, but I loved the game playing yeah. it and I loved it watching it. You know, yeah. that's partly why you have an interest, you know. So that, that's why I just cannot believe how much the AFL just completely – abdicated the field on promoting this. <laughs> they, they completely dropped the ball on it. You're right. I mean, I, I read so, somewhere yesterday, and I've, I've seen a couple of TV, a uh, couple of promos on, on TV yeah. that are starting this, this Friday night, Yeah, Richmond Carlton. But you're dead right. They, they've, if the AFL had put just a fraction of the money they spent on AFLX the last well, two years. Well, that's the real comparison, isn't it? Yeah, of course it is. And they don't have that this year, so where's all that money gone? Yeah. It hasn't gone over to – and the, the whole it's, purpose it's of dropping – It's gone to pay Brad Scott. That's where it's gone. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> and the whole thing was and, – and the AFL have been a bit distracted by this half-time non-debate, but um, the whole thing was they said we're dropping AFLX. The reason they said they were dropping yeah. AFLX, not the fact that everyone hated it and it was yeah. an absolute dud – they said the real reason is so we c- can give AFLW a window to breathe and yeah. have its own space. Well, well, why aren't you promoting that window? Yeah. I mean, I know there's been some low-level promotion, but not much. I mean, it's no. been, you know, you, you get, don't get a lot. No, no. They've, they've dropped the ball again, the AFL on this. But you know, I, it makes me question their commitment to it <laughs> because it doesn't make them the money. Yeah, all, but, all that's right. But I think strategically it's Actually, really that, important. That's what it all boils down to, really. I mean, yeah. it's not turning a profit or a dollar yet, so they don't really care about it. Yeah, they have got a new sponsor, of BHP, have come on board yeah. and, and chucked some money in. They also, just on another thing with on sponsorship, oh, yeah. they've uh, re-signed their deal with, uh, or not re-signed, but a new one for five years with Bet Easy. Yeah, so, and, uh, and that's, worth, that's worth multiple millions of dollars. $10 million, yeah. yeah. And the great thing about that is that I'm looking forward to the AFL now telling off players for gambling Yeah. after they promote it and normalise it everywhere. It's great when the AFL show... And how so, the, the, AFL, will show, AFL will show community leadership uh, <laughs> until there's money in it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, when people go, oh, I'm sick of all this Indigenous and, um, you know, sort of woke left yeah. stuff the AFL promotes. And I get the hypocrisy because the AFL then take gambling money and do various things. But what those people should really be doing is if you raise enough money to sponsor them uh, and get and pay them for a white man round, they'll probably give it to you. Yeah. Well, I mean, if, if the right people put their hands up, we, the, we, could, have the a, money. we could have a Benson and Hedges round. <laughs> but, you know, well, it's the, funny because the, they the, threw some money in. The sporting code's all campaigned heavily against the smoking ban. Yeah. So the, they kind of like, oh, we banned smoking. No, you didn't. You were forced to ban smoking. Oh, Cricket Australia was savage about it at the oh, time. Yeah. And remember, so were the, AF, so were the VFL. Yeah. And- I mean, the, that's, that's the reason I said Benson and Hedges then because it, it is the cigarette brand that jumps into my mind immediately when I think of sporting sponsorship. You remember seeing it, the logos yeah. all around the fence at the cricket. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and even I remember at the Brownlow one night, I think there's – there was a Benson and Hedges signage, <laughs> the Escort Cup. There was the Escort yeah, Cup. Yeah, Escort Cup. Yeah. That was a what? I, what I am um, just while we're on sponsorship marketing, I, I think it's remiss. And if anyone from Corona is listening, mm. I think they should pay you to drink Coronas in public and on billboards <laughs> to show that there's no danger. <laughs> <laughs> from the coronavirus. On billboards. Yeah, you <laughs> <laughs> it's maybe refreshing be, and safe. Maybe it'll be one of those, you know, those actual human billboards where I, where I actually get them sitting up there <laughs> with a bucket just, of them. Yeah. Just working my way through the that's bucket. That's right. But that's right. I think they should send <laughs> from you. From morning till night. <laughs> I think they should send you coronas. Yeah. And have you on Facebook and Twitter yeah. and everything be pictured. Posting pictures of you drinking them to show they're safe. Show they're safe. You know, so if anyone from Corona is listening, yeah, you know, we're, we're we're ready. We're available. We're ready. We're ready to you know show the safe how safe it. We're can re- be. ready to take that step. Uh, well, thank you. It's great to be back. And um, that is good. 
obviously you and I now are going to go and just have a few quiet drinks to mourn the the end of the uh, Rioli Favola partnership mm. that we we broke at the well, top of the Ravioli. That was what the they, were rav- <laughs> they known as Ravioli. <laughs> um, obviously, you know we, we've we've had some laughs during this, but it's um, it is it, a it's sad been occasion. tough, yeah. and uh, we just hope everyone out there is doing okay. Really, mm. is all, yeah. all we can say. And uh, on that note, we will be back. Stick around, and we'll we'll yeah. be back. We'll be back, yeah. and hopefully, uh, it's a it's a less uh, funereal. <laughs> Uh, vibe next uh, next episode absolutely and we'll see you then